Today's episode of the Jesse Blake Sports Report is brought to you by Dewar. That's D-U-E-R dot C-A. Go there and pick up maybe a Christmas gift or just something for your wardrobe. And I want to tell you about one thing today. It is the no sweat pant. It's as comfortable as a sweat pant, but like it looks like jeans. It is incredible. I have a pair and it is so incredibly soft. It's created to elevate the everyday wardrobe combined with the natural touch of cotton, the flexibility of spandex, and the moisture wicking antibacterial properties of eucalyptus derived tensile. That just means it's super soft and it's like jeans, but they're sweatpants. I can't recommend them enough. The no sweatpants. Go check it out. Dewer.ca, D U E R.ca. Check it out now. Think you know what way it's going to go? Make your bet at Sports Interaction. When puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pregame, live betting on all major sports, and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. 19 plus. Please play responsibly. And a four-leg parlay that I made tonight. I put a big smackaroo of $30 on this because it has a $200 payout if it hits. It is 7.8 to 1, which is if you put down $30, you get roughly $201 back. It is that Connor Garland... Of the Vancouver Canucks has two shots on goal. Brandon Montour of the Florida Panthers has three shots on goal. Mark Shifley of the Winnipeg Jets has three shots on goal. And Kevin Hayes of the Philadelphia Flyers has three shots on goal. All those four things need to happen. $30, $200. Four leg parlay. I haven't hit a single one of these parlays since we started doing this on the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Last episode, I was so upset because Anze Kopitar was the hard leg of our two-leg LA parlay payday. And Anze Kopitar scored in the final moments of the Kings game. And it was all set up for Marcus Morris to hit 20.5 points plus rebounds. No one was playing for the Clippers last uh, on Friday night. Kawhi was out. Paul George was out. Nobody was in the lineup. Marcus Morris was just there to score points. Puts up like 15 points and four rebounds. Falls just short of our LA parlay payday. And the hardest part of the leg, the two leg, doesn't hit. It was ridiculous. But I hope we can get this one. Four legs. Connor Garland, two shots. Brandon Brandon Montour, three shots. Shifley, three shots. Kevin Hayes, three shots. Let's see if they can all hit it. $30.200. Let's get to the show. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. The Jesse Blake Sports Report. Really? Oh, wait, really? The Jesse Blake Sports Report. That's it? Don't forget, it's the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. <laughs> you know, that's kind of redundant. Dude, is there a problem? And it's fine. I, I just, you know, I thought maybe you guys would come up with something, you know, good. Man, I just read it. You know what? Doesn't matter to me. I get paid by the word. <laughs> Let's do this. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. I am of the opinion that the NHL should move away from their current point system where you get two points for a regulation win and one point for an OT or a shootout loss and move towards wins and losses. I think moving towards wins and losses will achieve what the NHL wants to achieve and what all of these little additions to the game have been trying to achieve for so many years. And it's that we want a decision. We want a winner and a loser at the end of regulation. We want to try and avoid overtime. We want to really avoid the shootout because I think we're all at a consensus that these are gimmicks. These are gimmicks that have been added to the end of regulation so that we can have a a winner at all. Because we used to have ties in the NHL. There used to to be ties a long, long time ago, uh, pre the 03-04 lockout, 04-05 lockout. There used to be ties. And then coming out of the lockout, the 05-06 season, that's the first season that the NHL implemented the shootout. Because they said, okay, we got to have a decision here. We can't just keep going to overtime. We can't keep having ties. Let's think of something coming out of this lockout. Let's make the game a little more exciting. No more ties. We need deciders of these things, of these games. We're going to have a shootout. Fast forward 10 years later. 
the NHL in 2015 at the Board of Gun- Governors meeting, oh, specifically June 24th, I can tell you that date, they decided, you know what? Shootout's a little too gimmicky. Let's try and end it before even the shootout, and let's drop three. Uh, let's drop overtime to three on three. Because if you'll remember, overtime used to be four on four, and it, we weren't getting enough winners and losses out of four on four overtime. So the NHL said, let's try three on three to avoid the shootout. That's what that move is doing. That move to from four on four to three on three in 2015 was that so we could have a less games decided in the shootout. Uh, the AHL going into that season was the test subject for three on three overtime. They had 75 percent of its games that went past regulation decided in overtime. That number was 35 percent in the year before when it was four on four. So the NHL said, "Hey, we can jump from." 35% of our games ending in overtime at 4-on-4 four four to 75%, that is so much better because we want to avoid this thing that we created that we called the shootout. That was their whole motivation. Now we've reached the time when 3-on-3 three three has become too gimmicky like the shootout was. So I think it's about time we make the move that we made in 2015 and we move to wins and losses so that NHL teams can look at it and say, We need to make a decision here in regulation. We need this game to end in our favor at the end of 60 minutes because we might get to the coin toss section of the game and end up with nothing. Having the loser point in the NHL allows teams to take that point and say, that's okay. We can be fine with one point tonight. We came here. We fought hard. We went to the toss-up section. We're going to walk away with one point either way. And I look back at the standings. This is where we get to the important part of our exercise here today. Would moving to wins and losses have a material change on the standings? If you saw the headline of this video, because you clicked on it, you clicked on this podcast, you're listening to it right now, so you know what's about to happen when we go through these standings. A play- There's a playoff spot that's on the line because teams were able to take advantage of the loser point system, not win as many games as another team who might have been outside of the playoffs, and grab a playoff spot through loser points. This was a fun exercise to look back on the standings because you had to, well, I had to look at the 21-22 season and the 18-19 season. The reason for that is those are the last two full NHL seasons. I forgot that up until last season, so last late, late June, because they handed out Stanley Cup a little uh, little late, the 2019 season was the last actual regular season uh, in the NHL. The, the pandemic is, if you remember this little thing, the pandemic, it's such a blur the last three years of our lives. It's crazy to look back on the 2019 season and be like, oh, yeah. All of that happened, and we had no idea what was coming. Anyways, so those are the two sets of standings I looked at. And I said, is there a material change if the NHL, if Gary Bettman called me up and said, Jesse, we're going to accept your suggestion to go to wins and losses. How would that change our world as the NHL? So we're going to go back, starting with the 21-22 season. If you are watching right now, you can see it on the screen. You can see the updated standings based on wins and losses. If you are listening, I will read you out some of the important notes. In the Eastern Conference, the most important note here for the 21-22 season is that there was no change. There was no change at all. So if you remember the playoff teams from last year, Florida, Carolina, Toronto, New York Rangers, Tampa, Boston, Pittsburgh, Washington, Zero change there in the East. The top teams remain in the top. The top teams based on wins and losses. The top teams based on points. All the exact same. And 9 through 16, the outside of the playoff teams. New York, Columbus, Buffalo, Detroit, Ottawa, New Jersey, Philly, Montreal. All in the exact same order. I was shocked. I was shocked. Because I started with my, with my exercise when I redid this. You can see my spreadsheet right now on the screen. 
when I redid this, I expected a lot of changes. I was like, oh, my idea is so good. I want lots of changes. The points and the wins and losses are going to change everything. And then I did the East. That's where I first started. I was like, oh, like if we literally move to this system, nothing would change. So let's go to the Western Conference. Western Conference, the playoff teams were Colorado, Minnesota, Calgary, St. Louis, Edmonton, Dallas, L.A., Nashville. There is one change. L.A. moves down in the standings. Dallas moves up. Based on the regular NHL point system, L.A. finished with 99 points. Dallas finished with 98 points. So L.A. was the sixth seed. Dallas was the seventh seed. Based on my organization of the standings in wins and losses, Dallas had 46 wins and 36 losses. LA had 44 wins and 38 losses. So Dallas would have been the sixth seed. LA would have been the seventh seed. Other than that, there is no other change in the standings. Vegas still finishes outside in ninth. Vancouver, Winnipeg, San Jose, Anaheim, Chicago, Seattle, Arizona round out 10 through 16. One caveat before I continue. We don't know how having a wins and losses system, aka not having the loser point, would affect teams at the end of games. Is there more motivation to go for it? Is there an instance where you're pulling the goalie when you're tied because you really want that win? We don't know how it would change the actual play on the ice, but just based on switching from points to wins and losses, there is no change in terms of playoff teams from the 21-22 season, when you're changing the point system, and there was only one change in terms of seeding. We went 6-7, and seven, Dallas and LA swapped. So that was that was the 21-22 season. The other season I did, like, like I told you before we started this, was the 18-19 season. Because I couldn't just do one season and say, okay, that's it. There's no change. This is it. If we move to this system, we move to wins and losses, it doesn't make a difference. No, that's not true. You saw the title of this episode. You know there's going to be a big change. You know what's coming. Let's go to 1819. The playoff teams in 1819 were Tampa, Boston, Washington, New York, Islanders, Columbus, Toronto, Carolina, Pittsburgh. That is the reorganization based on wins and losses. According to the actual standings, the point system standings, the conference standings in terms of points, it was Tampa, Boston, Washington, Islanders, Toronto, Pittsburgh, Carolina, Columbus. So you'll notice a few things there with the teams I just read off. I read them off pretty quickly. So let's slow down a second and get you the changes. In the 18-19 season, if we organize the standings by wins and losses, we have... Columbus moving up from 8th place to 3rd place. Columbus on the year had 98 points. They lost a lot of games in regulation. Only 4 OT wins. Uh, Sorry, OT losses. 47 wins though. 35 losses. That would put them ahead of Toronto, Carolina, and Pittsburgh. Who based on the point system, finished ahead of them in the standings. So we have here our first material change. And I think this is the right way to do it. Columbus should be a fifth seed. Pittsburgh had 44 wins and yet is sixth seed in the East. Columbus had 47 wins, three whole more wins, and were the eighth seed. Columbus, based on my standings, should have been that fifth seed. The other changes in the standings, Toronto moves down one on account of Columbus moving up so high. Toronto had 46 wins on the year. That was 100 points. They would move down a slot because they have less wins than Columbus. Carolina would stay the same. Even though they got leapfrogged by Columbus, they don't move down because Pittsburgh is the big loser in the 18-19 season, because they move in the Eastern Conference, they move all the way down to eighth place, still in a playoff spot, you should note. But who knows how we rank the tiebreaker, because Montreal would have been tied for the eighth seed 
if we were to reorganize the standings by wins and losses. They would have been tied with Pittsburgh for the eighth seed at 44 and 38. I think that's huge because in if if I'm this is Jesse Blake commissioner right now, I'm I'm running it like baseball. I'm playing game 83. We have tiebreaker central. Get one game elimination, are you kidding me? The hey, NHL owners Gate revenue. Do you speak the language of money? More money. Game 83, Montreal, Pittsburgh for the final playoff spot. Come on. The rest of the standings, 10 through 16, we have in the actual standings, 10 through 16 was Florida, Philly, New York, Buffalo, Detroit, New Jersey, Ottawa. Reorganization of the standings, we have Philly moving up one spot, Florida moving down, Buffalo moving up, New York moving down. And then Detroit, New Jersey, Ottawa rounding out the standings. So in the Eastern Conference in the 18-19 season, if we were to organize the standings by wins and losses, we saw a tie for 8th and ninth. We saw Columbus go from 8th to 5th. And we saw a lot of little flip-floppies on some very close teams, and it would affect the draft lottery odds. Let's move to the big kahuna, the Western Conference of the 18-19 season and what organizing the standings by wins and losses would have done to the league. Calgary ran away with the West in 18-19, if you remember. They had 107 points. They had 50 wins. Nothing was going to change that. But if we go to the second seed, the second seed was the San Jose Sharks, who only had 46 wins. And the third and fourth seeds of Nashville and Winnipeg had 47 wins. The Sharks would have moved down from a second seed to a fourth seed in these new standings. St. Louis, Dallas, Vegas would have rounded out five, six, and seven. No change there. No big change. And then here we have the piece of... De la Ristance. I don't know. How does I, I don't speak French. I'm sorry. Um, here we have the the thing we've all been waiting for. There we go. The Arizona Coyotes had 39 wins and 43 losses in the 1819 season. That would have been better than Colorado, who were the eighth seed, who had 38 wins and 44 losses. Once again, 1819 season. In real life, Colorado finished with 90 points. 38, 30, and 14. Arizona finished with 86 points. They were the ninth seed. 39, 35, and 8. But if we were to organize it by wins and losses, Arizona has 39 wins, 43 losses. Colorado has 38 wins, 44 losses. I don't understand how you look at the standings and say, Colorado deserves to be in the playoffs more than Arizona. Arizona won more games. I think that's what it should come down to. Arizona won more games. That mattered. I think that should matter. Wins and losses. Arizona was robbed of a playoff spot. In 1819, by the point system, if you look at it by wins and losses, they should have been the eighth seed. Colorado should have been the ninth seed. One spot on the outside looking in. The other change, we had uh, Chicago move down from the 10th to 11th, and Minnesota hop up from the 11th to the 10th. Other than that, the bottom is the exact same. Vancouver, Anaheim, Edmonton, LA. And then the Kraken weren't a team yet. I'm not saying that there would be a significant difference if the NHL went to a wins and losses system. I think looking at the standings outlined that very clearly, that there's not a huge change in the standings. But there's little moments here with Columbus, with Arizona, where we see an effect on a franchise, really, for Arizona. If you had those playoff dates, Colorado, you're missing the playoffs in 1819. I don't know. I think we should be rewarding teams for winning the games. I think this will force us to truly see what it is 
that the NHL is trying to make us see since 0405 when they implemented the shootout and then tried to move teams away from the shootout consistently that the extra time is more of a gimmick in the NHL because we can't just play five on five forever. We need some way to end it. And let's force teams to try and win games in regulation by not rewarding them for losing in the gimmick time. That is what I hope you take away from today. The Arizona Coyotes deserve a playoff spot in the 18-19 season. That is it for me today. I will see you again shortly. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be listening or watching this video, and I appreciate you for that. I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic day. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.